floor framing begins after the foundation is ready and the mud sills are installed. Typically there's a beam to install somewhere mid-span because floor joists usually can't span a full house width. And the beam is usually level with the mud sills so the joists can sit on both of them. Before laying out the floor, let's take a look at some layout options. Subflooring and other sheet goods come in 4 foot by 8 foot sizes. Both 4 feet and 8 feet are divisible by 16 inches. Every 16 inches is marked on tape measures with a black arrow. They're also divisible by 24 inches, marked with a red square. For joists that are to be placed 16 inches on center, mark a layout line 15 and a quarter inches in from the end of the mud sill. This puts the center of the joist at 16 inches and each successive joist 16 inches apart so that an 8 foot piece of subflooring will end in the middle of a joist which is where the next sheet will begin. Rather than cutting every joist to butt into another on top of the beam, run them past each other. This eliminates a ton of cutting and saves a lot of time. However, it places the sister joist on the opposite side of the layout line, so this needs to be remembered. When laying out the beam, place X's on both sides of the line, indicating which direction the joist runs. This ought to keep all the joists running straight and square so that the subflooring will install smoothly. But before putting down that subfloor, locate and transfer the point loads. Atop this beam will sit a bearing wall that carries half the ceiling weight. This wall sits directly over the beam, so the load is transferred directly. If the wall is more than a joist depth away from the beam, you either need to have put the beam in a different place, or you need a backup plan. The roof is carried by the outside walls. Within those walls are places that have extra concentrations of weight, such as the trimmer studs under headers. These studs need to be fully supported with blocks to transfer the weight to the mud sill, which transfers it to the foundation. In this opening, the trimmers are fully supported by the double joists below. But this one has a larger load that's not fully supported. One good option is to add a couple of joists to pick up the load. Another thing to think about before laying the subflooring down is how difficult it's going to be to insulate that last little joist cavity after it's covered. It'll never be easier to insulate than it is now before you put down any subflooring. As usual, planning ahead means not going backwards. Thank you.